The sun hung low in the sky, casting a golden hue across the lavish hospital room. Charles Harrington, propped up against a mountain of plush pillows, stared out of the window with a heavy heart. The room was adorned with expensive artwork and finely crafted furniture, a testament to the wealth he had amassed over a lifetime. Yet, as he gazed out at the world beyond those glass panes, the beauty outside only deepened his sense of isolation. He could hear the muted sounds of laughter and life from the park below, where families strolled and children played, a stark contrast to the silence that enveloped him. Amelia, he whispered, the name tasting bitter on his tongue. It had been years since he had last seen his daughter, and the estrangement weighed heavily on him. He recalled the days when she was just a little girl, her laughter echoing through the halls of their grand home. Those memories felt like distant echoes, taunting him with the warmth of connection that had long since faded into the coldness of regret. He shifted slightly, the movement sending a jolt of pain through his frail body. His health had deteriorated rapidly, and he found himself grappling with the reality of his mortality. He had spent years accumulating wealth, but now, as he lay in this sterile room, he realized that all the money in the world could not buy him the love of his daughter. The loneliness that accompanied his riches was a bitter pill to swallow. The door creaked open, and in stepped Emily Carter, his devoted nurse. She entered with a gentle smile, her presence a beacon of warmth in the otherwise clinical environment. Emily had a way of making him feel human again, even amidst the machines and IV drips that surrounded him. She wore scrubs that hugged her frame comfortably, her hair pulled back in a neat bun, a few strands escaping to frame her face. Good afternoon, Mr. Harrington, she greeted him softly, her voice laced with empathy. How are you feeling today? Charles turned his gaze from the window to her, his eyes weary yet grateful for her presence. Oh, you know, just another day in paradise, he replied dryly, a hint of a smirk playing on his lips. How about you, Emily? Any grand adventures in the world of nursing today? Emily chuckled lightly, but there was a flicker of sadness in her eyes. Just the usual, checking vitals, administering medication. You know how it is. She moved closer to his bedside, adjusting the blanket that had slipped down his frail frame. But I do enjoy my time with you. It makes the long shifts a bit more bearable. He watched her, a sense of comfort washing over him. You're far too kind, my dear, he said his voice softening. I suppose it's easy to be kind when one is not facing the specter of death every day. Emily's expression shifted as she sensed the weight of his words. You're not alone, Mr. Harrington. You have people who care about you, she reassured him, though she felt the sting of her own loneliness creeping in. Her thoughts flickered to her own father, a distant figure in her life, and the burdens of student debt that loomed over her like a dark cloud. Caring is one thing, he replied, his tone tinged with bitterness. But connection? That's something entirely different. My wealth has brought me many things, but it hasn't brought me the one thing I truly desire, my daughter. He paused, his voice faltering as he struggled to hold back the swell of emotions, threatening to overflow. Amelia hasn't spoken to me in years. I've tried to reach out, but it's like shouting into an abyss. Emily's heart ached for him. She could see the pain etched on his face, the profound loneliness that accompanied his wealth. I'm sure there's still a chance to mend that relationship, she offered gently, though she felt a pang of uncertainty. Family can be complicated, but sometimes a simple gesture can make all the difference. He looked at her, an idea forming in his mind. What if, he began hesitantly, what if you were to pretend to be her, just for a day? I know it sounds absurd, but I long to experience what it feels like to have a daughter again, even if it's just an illusion. Emily's breath caught in her throat, her heart racing at the unexpected request. Pretend to be your daughter, she echoed, her brow furrowing as she processed the weight of his words. Mr. Harrington, that's, that's quite a lot to ask of me. I know, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, but you have no idea how much it would mean to me. Just to hear someone call me dad again, even if it's not the truth, it might bring me a semblance of peace before. He trailed off, unable to finish the thought. The room fell silent, and Emily could feel the gravity of the moment hanging in the air. She hesitated, torn between the ethical implications of his request and the deep compassion she felt for the man before her. I, I need to think about it, she stammered, her mind racing with conflicting emotions. 
Charles nodded slowly, understanding the weight of what he was asking. Of course, take your time, but know that the loneliness can be suffocating. He looked away, his gaze drifting back to the window. And if you can't help me, then I suppose I'll continue to face the end alone, as I have for too long. Mr. Harrington, Emily began, her voice firm yet gentle. She felt a rush of empathy for him, a desire to ease his suffering. Let me think about it. I'll come back later, okay? He turned to her, his eyes reflecting a flicker of hope. Thank you, Emily. No matter what you decide, I appreciate your kindness. As Emily left the room, she couldn't shake the weight of his request. The thought of stepping into the shoes of a daughter she had never known was daunting, yet a part of her felt drawn to the idea. She pondered the complexities of family and connection and how fragile those bonds could be. For a brief moment, she imagined what it would be like to have a father who cared, to feel that love envelop her like a warm embrace. Walking down the sterile hospital corridors, she felt a mix of emotions swirl within her. Compassion for Charles, her own struggles with family, and the longing for connection that resonated deeply within her soul. She couldn't help but wonder if, in pretending to be someone else, she might find not only solace for him, but also healing for herself. The sun dipped lower in the sky, casting long shadows across the hallways as Emily made her way to the staff lounge. She needed to think, to process this unusual request, and to consider what it could mean for both her and Charles. As she sat down, the weight of the world pressed heavily on her shoulders, and she realized that sometimes, the lines between truth and illusion blur in the most unexpected ways. Emily Carter stood outside Charles Harrington's hospital room, her heart pounding in her chest. Today was the day she would don the mask of Amelia, a daughter she had never met. Clenching her hands to steady her nerves, she took a deep breath and pushed the door open. The room was just as she had left it, lavishly decorated, yet stifled by the sterile scent of antiseptic. Good morning, Amelia. Charles greeted her, his eyes lighting up, unaware of the turmoil within her. He was sitting up in bed, propped against pillows adorned with elegant silk cases, a stark contrast to the hospital's clinical environment. His silver hair gleamed under the fluorescent lights, and for a moment, he looked like a man who had everything, except the one thing he truly desired. Good morning, Dad, Emily replied, slipping into the persona she had rehearsed in her mind. She had put on a soft pastel dress, something Amelia might wear, hoping to invoke the spirit of a daughter who had been absent for far too long. Charles studied her, his brow furrowing slightly. You look just like her. I mean, I know it's you, but the resemblance? His voice cracked, and he quickly cleared his throat, fighting emotions that threatened to spill over. It's uncanny. Emily forced a smile, her heart aching for the man before her. Thank you. I just wanted to make today special. Special, he echoed, the word hanging in the air like a fragile promise. Let's make it memorable. They spent the morning in a flurry of memories and stories. Charles animatedly recounted tales from Amelia's childhood, painting vivid pictures of family gatherings and laughter that reverberated through their home. Emily listened intently, her heart swelling with a blend of affection and sorrow. She felt an undeniable connection with this man, who, despite his wealth, felt the sting of abandonment. Do you remember the time we went to the lake? He asked, his eyes sparkling with nostalgia. Amelia was so afraid of the water, but I convinced her to dip her toes in. She squealed and ran back to shore, only to come back for more. It was the most fun I've ever had. Emily chuckled softly, imagining the scene. I can picture it. She must have been adorable. Adorable doesn't even begin to cover it. Charles laughed, a sound that felt foreign yet warm. She had this way of lighting up a room. I miss that light. The conversation flowed effortlessly, and Emily found herself losing track of time. She was no longer just a nurse. She was becoming part of a family she had never known. Each story Charles shared peeled back layers of his heart, revealing a man who had loved deeply despite his regrets. Did you have any family traditions? Emily inquired, genuinely curious about the Harrington's past. Oh, many, he replied, his gaze drifting to the window. Every Christmas, we would build a snowman in the front yard. Amelia always insisted on giving him a name. One year, it was Frosty the Snowman, Jr. He chuckled at the memory, a bittersweet smile ghosting across his lips. That snowman stood there until March, melted and lopsided. But we loved him just the same. 
Sounds like a wonderful tradition, Emily said, her voice softening. It's beautiful to have those memories. Yes, it is, he sighed, his expression growing somber. But it's painful, too. I've lost so much time with her. I just wish I could turn back the clock. Emily's heart ached for him. She had her own unresolved issues with her father, a distant relationship she had often ignored. But here, in this hospital room, she was discovering what it felt like to have a father figure, someone who cared, someone who needed her. It was intoxicating and terrifying all at once. As the afternoon wore on, they shared more stories, laughter spilling between them. But Emily's mind began to drift. She glanced down at her phone, the screen lighting up with a message from her own father, reminding her of their canceled dinner plans. A wave of guilt washed over her. She had committed to pretending to be Charles' daughter for a day. But what about her own father? The thought of disappointing him weighed heavily on her conscience. Emily? Charles' voice broke through her reverie, concern etching his features. Is everything all right? Yes, just a little tired, she lied, forcing a smile. It's been a long day. His brow furrowed and he reached out, placing a hand over hers. You can talk to me, you know. I may not be your real father, but I'm here for you. Her heart twisted at his words. Here was this man, vulnerable and yearning for connection, offering her the very thing she had been missing in her own life. I appreciate that, Charles, she said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. Good. Now, let's talk about that time Amelia tried to bake cookies, he said, his tone shifting back to one of fondness. Oh, it was a disaster. Flour everywhere and she thought it would be a good idea to add salt instead of sugar. We ended up with the most inedible cookies you can imagine. Emily laughed, the sound genuine and bright. I can just picture it. Did you eat them anyway? Of course. I had to encourage her, he said, his eyes twinkling. We laughed so hard that day. It's these moments I miss the most. As they continued their conversation, Emily felt the walls of her own guarded heart begin to crumble. She had stepped into this role to provide comfort to a dying man, yet she found herself longing for the same connection she was creating with Charles. The irony of her situation was not lost on her. Charles, she said hesitantly, what would you say to Amelia if she walked through that door right now? He paused, his expression contemplative. I would tell her how much I love her and how sorry I am for everything that happened between us. I would beg her to forgive me. His voice trembled with raw emotion. I would tell her I never stopped thinking about her. Tears welled in Emily's eyes as she witnessed the depth of his longing. You deserve that chance, Charles, she said, her voice thick with emotion. You deserve to tell her. He looked at her, his eyes glistening. Do you think it's too late? I don't know, she replied honestly, her heart aching for both of them. But you owe it to yourself to try. Family is worth fighting for, no matter the distance. The room fell silent, the weight of their conversation lingering in the air. Emily glanced at her phone again, the reminder of her own father's message still blinking. She felt torn, trapped between her own reality and the role she had assumed. Emily? Charles broke the silence, his voice gentle. You've been so kind to me today. Thank you for sharing this time. You truly are a gift. She managed a smile, although it felt bittersweet. I'm glad I could be here for you, Charles. But as they sat together, she couldn't shake the feeling of conflict bubbling within her. Two fathers, two lives, and yet only one choice. The crisp air of the hospital garden brought a refreshing contrast to the sterile confines of Charles's room. Vibrant flowers were blooming, and the gentle rustle of leaves in the breeze seemed to whisper secrets of renewal and hope. Charles Harrington, leaning slightly on his cane, felt a tug of nostalgia as he stepped outside, the sun filtering through the branches above, casting dappled patterns on the ground. Beside him, Emily Carter, clad in a light sundress to embody the spirit of Amelia, walked with a nervous excitement. Isn't it beautiful out here? Emily remarked, glancing around at the colorful blooms. She felt a sense of freedom in the garden as if the outside world could somehow lift the weight of their shared deception, if only for a moment. Charles paused, his gaze drifting to a patch of daisies, swaying gently in the breeze. Yes, it reminds me of a picnic I once had with Amelia. She was just a little girl, carefree and full of laughter. His voice softened, a bittersweet smile crossing his lips. 
We spread a blanket under an old oak tree, and I packed her favorite sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly with the crusts cut off. She insisted on bringing her doll, and we pretended the doll was having a tea party with us. She was so animated, so full of life. It was one of those simple moments that stay with you forever. Emily watched him intently, heart swelling with empathy. She could picture the scene vividly, little Amelia giggling as she poured imaginary tea for her doll, her father watching her with adoration. That sounds lovely, she said softly, her voice tinged with longing. I can only imagine how special those moments were for you both. Charles turned to her, his expression a mix of regret and fondness. I wish I could relive those days. They feel like a lifetime ago. I took them for granted, believing that time was endless. It's too late for me to turn back the clock, but I would give anything to reconnect with her, to tell her I'm sorry. Emily felt the weight of his words settle heavily in her chest. She had grown up in a world where reconciliation with her own father felt like a distant dream. And now, standing in front of this man she had only known as a patient, she was seeing him as a father who had lost his way. Maybe it's not too late, she ventured cautiously, her heart racing at the thought of encouraging him to reach out to Amelia. People can change, you know? Relationships can be rebuilt. The sunlight caught the glimmer of hope in his eyes, but a shadow of doubt flickered across his face. You don't understand, Emily. The distance between us isn't just physical, it's emotional. I pushed her away when she needed me the most. I thought if I focused on work and success, she would be proud of me. But all she wanted was my time, my love. His voice cracked, revealing the raw pain he had buried beneath layers of pride and regret. She reached out, instinctively placing a reassuring hand on his arm. You can still try. A letter, maybe. Just to let her know you're thinking of her. The thought of him reaching out sent a shiver of anticipation through her. Charles shook his head, the sadness in his eyes deepening. What if she doesn't want to hear from me? I've waited so long that it feels like I've lost my chance. His voice was barely above a whisper, echoing the fears that haunted him. Before Emily could respond, they turned a corner of the garden and caught sight of a young father playing with his daughter. The little girl with her pigtails bouncing as she chased after a butterfly was bursting with joy. The father knelt down, his laughter ringing through the air as he encouraged her to catch the elusive creature. Charles's expression shifted dramatically, his heart clenching at the sight. Look at them, he said, his voice barely a murmur, full of longing and sorrow. That should have been me with Amelia. I should have been there to watch her grow, to support her through life's challenges. Instead, I built a wall between us, thinking it would somehow protect me from the pain of my own failures. Emily felt a lump form in her throat, realizing how deeply his regrets cut into him. You were doing what you thought was best, Charles, but it doesn't have to end like this. He turned to her, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. But what if I'm too broken to fix things? What if Amelia sees me as just a ghost of the father she once knew? You're not broken, Charles. You're human. And being human means making mistakes and learning from them. Maybe she just needs to know that you care, that you're still here. He took a shaky breath, contemplating her words. Emily could see the flicker of hope battling against a tide of despair within him. She wanted so badly for him to reach out, to open his heart once more. Tell me about her, Emily prompted, trying to steer the conversation back to the positive memories. What was she like as a teenager? Charles chuckled softly, his eyes lighting up at the memories. Oh, she was a force to be reckoned with, determined, headstrong, just like her mother. She was passionate about art, always sketching in her notebook. I remember once, she painted a mural on the side of our garage without my permission. I was furious at first, but when I saw it, I couldn't help but admire her spirit. It was a sunset, full of colors that danced across the wall. She had such talent. I should have encouraged her more. Emily could see the regret etched on his face, and her heart ached for him. It sounds like she was a wonderful artist. Maybe you could use that as a way to reach out. Tell her how proud you are of her talent. As they continued to walk through the garden, Charles's demeanor shifted from despair to contemplation, the wheels in his mind turning. You really think it could work? I do, she said, her conviction palpable. You have to believe that she would want to hear from you, that she might even need it as much as you do. They strolled in silence for a moment, the weight of their conversation lingering in the air. Emily felt a surge of hope, 
wishing that the bond they had formed could somehow lead to a brighter future for both of them. Thank you, Emily, Charles said, breaking the silence. I don't know what I would do without you. You've given me more than just a glimpse of my daughter today. You've reminded me of what it means to connect, to care. She smiled, feeling a warmth spread through her chest. I'm just glad I could be here for you, she replied, knowing that she had already formed a connection with him that transcended their roles. As they returned to his room, the shadows of doubt and regret still lingered. But there was also a sense of possibility. Emily felt a mixture of excitement and trepidation. Could she really encourage Charles to reach out to Amelia when she was living a lie? But as she looked at him, she realized that the truth might just be the catalyst they both needed to heal their respective wounds. In that moment, the weight of her own struggles seemed to lift, replaced by the hope that perhaps, together, they could rewrite the narratives of their lives. As the golden hues of the evening sun spilled into Charles Harrington's lavish hospital room, the atmosphere was charged with a blend of nostalgia and trepidation. Charles, seated on the edge of his bed, held a camera in his shaky hands, his eyes twinkling with a mix of excitement and sadness. Emily Carter stood across from him, adorned in the clothes she had borrowed from a colleague, trying her best to embody the essence of Amelia, the daughter Charles had longed to reconnect with. Come on, Emily, he urged, a childlike enthusiasm breaking through the melancholy that had shadowed him for so long. Just one picture to capture this moment. It'll mean so much to me. Emily felt a lump form in her throat, she had been swept away by the emotional whirlwind of the day, and now, standing before Charles, she could see the yearning in his eyes, the desire to hold on to something tangible, something that resembled family, but the weight of her deception pressed heavily on her shoulders. Are you sure you want to do this? She asked hesitantly, her voice barely above a whisper. Absolutely. He beamed, the vigor of hope glowing in his frail frame. This is the first time I've felt like a father in years. I want to remember this day, this connection we've forged. With a reluctant nod, she stepped closer, positioning herself beside him. Charles raised the camera, framing the shot, his smile radiant. Say cheese, he prompted, and in an instant the shutter clicked, freezing a moment that felt both surreal and painfully beautiful. As the picture developed in his mind, he lowered the camera, gazing at her with a mixture of gratitude and longing. You have no idea how much this means to me, he said, his voice thick with emotion. To see you here, to feel like I'm not alone, it's a gift I never expected. Emily's heart ached at his sincerity. I'm glad I could be here for you, Charles, but I... Before she could finish, he interrupted. Let's look at the photo. He turned the camera towards her, showing the image that seemed to encapsulate their shared moment of vulnerability. As Emily examined the picture, she felt a rush of conflicting emotions. The image reflected a father and daughter, two souls who had found comfort in each other, if only for a fleeting moment. But the truth lingered like a specter, reminding her of the deception that lay beneath this facade. Charles's gaze shifted as he studied the photo, his expression morphing into one of deep reflection. I miss her so much, he murmured, the sound barely escaping his lips. I've missed so much of her life. I thought, I thought maybe I could reach out, but it feels too late now. Moved by his vulnerability, Emily felt compelled to bridge the distance between them, even if just for a moment. It's never too late, Charles. People can surprise you, she said softly, her own experiences echoing in her words. Sometimes, the first step is the hardest, but it's worth taking. He looked at her, eyes shimmering with unshed tears. You're right, I've spent too long convinced that there's no way back. But seeing you today, it's reignited something in me. His voice cracked, and he swallowed hard, trying to compose himself. I just wish I could turn back time. As silence enveloped them, Emily's mind raced. She had been living a lie, but in this moment, she felt an undeniable connection with Charles, one that transcended the roles they were playing. You know, I've had my own struggles with my father, she confessed, her heart pounding. It's complicated, but I still hold on to hope that we can mend things. Charles turned to her, curiosity peaked. What happened? Taking a deep breath, Emily shared her story, the distance that had grown between her and her father due to misunderstandings and unspoken words. I think sometimes we're too afraid to reach out because we fear rejection, she said, but I've learned that it's important to take that leap of faith. You might be surprised at the outcome. 
Charles nodded slowly, absorbing her words. You're wise beyond your years, Emily. It's just, after everything with Amelia, I feel like I've failed as a father. I don't know if I can face her again. Maybe start with a letter, Emily suggested gently. It's less intimidating. You can express everything you've held inside without the pressure of an immediate response. He considered this, his brow furrowing in thought. A letter. Yes, that might work. I could pour my heart out, tell her how much I regret everything. But what if she doesn't want to hear from me? Then you'll know, and you can move forward, she replied, her tone reassuring. But if she does, it could be the beginning of something beautiful. As they sat in contemplative silence, the mood in the room shifted. The bond they had formed seemed to deepen, transcending the boundaries of their original roles. Emily's heart swelled with empathy, seeing Charles not just as a wealthy man seeking solace, but as a father aching for connection, desperate to mend the pieces of his fractured life. Suddenly, the tranquility was shattered by the sharp trill of Charles's phone. He glanced at the screen, his expression changing from contemplative to alarmed. It's my lawyer, he said, his voice tense. I wasn't expecting a call tonight. Take it, Emily urged, sensing the shift in his demeanor. I'll be right here. Charles answered the call, his voice steady but strained. Hello, Richard. What's going on? As the conversation unfolded, Emily could see the color drain from his face. Contested? But why? I've made my wishes clear. His voice rose, a mixture of anger and disbelief. Emily leaned forward, concern etched on her face. Charles? He held up a hand to silence her, his eyes narrowing as he listened intently. No, I don't want to delay anything. Just tell me what I need to do. The call ended abruptly, and Charles sank back against the bed, his expression a mix of shock and despair. They're contesting my will, he said, his voice trembling. I can't believe this is happening. My affairs are in disarray, and all I can think about is Amelia. What if I die without mending things with her? Emily's heart ached for him. You're still here, Charles. You have the chance to reach out, to take that first step, she encouraged, wishing she could shield him from the storm brewing within. He looked at her, eyes filled with vulnerability. But what if it's too late? What if I leave this world without ever having the chance to reconnect with her? In that moment, Emily realized the depth of his fear. His mortality loomed larger than ever, and with it, the weight of unfulfilled relationships. She reached out, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. You have the power to change that narrative. Don't let fear dictate your choices. Let it fuel your determination to reach out. Charles took a deep breath, trying to steady himself. You're right. I can't let this slip away. I won't. As they sat together, a newfound resolve blossomed between them, a shared understanding that the ties that bind us are often more complex than mere blood relations. In the dim light of the hospital room, they had forged a connection that transcended their initial roles, one that held the promise of hope and redemption in the face of uncertainty. And amid the turmoil, both found solace in the fact that they were not alone in their struggles, united by the desire for connection, love, and the courage to confront their pasts. As the afternoon sun began its slow descent, casting a warm golden hue across the lavish hospital room, Emily sat beside Charles, her heart racing with the weight of the promise she had made. She could see the flicker of hope in his eyes, a light that had been dimmed for far too long. The thought of reaching out to Amelia was both thrilling and terrifying. Emily took a deep breath, gathering her thoughts before speaking. Charles, she began, her voice steady despite the turmoil inside her. I really want to help you reach out to Amelia. I think it's important and I believe it could mean a lot to both of you. She watched as his expression softened, a bittersweet smile forming on his lips. Oh, Emily, he sighed, leaning back against the plush pillows. You don't know how much that means to me. I've waited so long for a chance to mend things with her, to feel like a father again, even if it's just for a moment. His voice trembled with emotion, and for a moment they were both lost in the gravity of the moment. What do you think we should say? Emily asked, her hands fidgeting with the edge of her sweater. How do you want to start? Charles pondered for a moment, his brow furrowing as memories flooded his mind. I think, I think I want to tell her how sorry I am, he finally said, his voice thick with emotion. I want her to know that I've thought about her every day and that I regret the distance between us. I want her to feel that, despite everything, 
I love her. Emily nodded, touched by the sincerity in his words. That's a beautiful start. Why don't we write it down together? She stood up to retrieve a notepad and pen from the small desk at the corner of the room. As she returned, she noticed Charles's gaze had turned distant, as if he were staring into the past. Do you have any specific memories you'd like to include? She prompted gently, settling back into her seat. Charles smiled wistfully, his eyes glazing over with nostalgia. There was this one time when Amelia was about eight years old. We went on a camping trip, just the two of us. I remember she was so excited to catch a fish. She was convinced she'd be the best angler in the world. He chuckled softly, shaking his head. Of course, she ended up catching nothing, but she was so happy just being out there with me, under the stars. Emily could see the warmth of that memory lighting up his face. That sounds like a wonderful trip, she encouraged, jotting down his words. What would you want to say about that? I want her to remember the fun we had, he said, his voice growing stronger. I want her to know that despite my mistakes, I cherished every moment we spent together. I want her to know that I've always been proud of her, even from afar. As they began to write the letter, Emily felt a rush of emotions. Each word they penned seemed to bridge the gap between Charles and his daughter, a connection she had never anticipated facilitating. She glanced at Charles, who was now completely immersed in the process, his face a mixture of hope and trepidation. Do you think she'll respond? He asked suddenly, his voice barely above a whisper. I believe she will. Emily replied, her heart aching for both of them. If she knows how much you care and that you want to make things right, she'll see that. Charles nodded, though doubt clouded his expression. I just don't want to scare her away. I've hurt her too much already. Honesty is your best ally here, Emily reassured him, her expression earnest. You have to be open about your feelings. It's the only way to rebuild that trust. He took a deep breath, straightening up in bed as if gathering strength. You're right. I've spent too long hiding from my mistakes. It's time to face them head on. With renewed resolve, they continued writing. Each sentence felt like a step toward healing, and the atmosphere in the room shifted from one of sorrow to hope. As they finished the letter, Emily felt a strange pull towards Charles's belongings. Curiosity bubbled within her, and she glanced toward a small trunk at the foot of his bed. Charles, can I look through your things? Maybe there's something else here that could help us. Of course, he replied, his tone light. Everything's fair game at this point. Emily approached the trunk and opened it, revealing a collection of photographs and mementos from Charles's life. She sifted through the contents, her fingers brushing against the faded images, each one telling a story of a life well lived. But one photograph caught her attention, and she pulled it out with a gasp. Charles, look at this, she exclaimed, holding the photo up for him to see. It was a picture of a young woman with striking features, Amelia. But what stunned Emily was the familiarity in the woman's eyes. I know her. I think, I think I met her during my college days. Charles's eyes widened in surprise, a spark of recognition igniting within them. What do you mean? He asked, leaning forward in his bed. I was at a campus event a few years ago and there she was. We had a brief conversation about our families, but I had no idea she was your daughter. She was lovely, Charles so full of life. Emily's mind raced as she recalled the details. She talked about her father, how much she missed him, but didn't know how to reach out. Are you sure? Charles's voice trembled with a mix of disbelief and hope. Yes, I remember her laughter and how she spoke about wanting to reconnect, but felt too hurt to take the step. This is incredible. Emily's heart raced as the realization washed over her. Charles, this could work. If she remembers me, it might make the connection easier. Charles looked at her, a mixture of awe and gratitude on his face. You think she'll see this as a sign? I believe so, Emily said, her voice filled with conviction. You could mention our encounter in the letter. It could remind her of the warmth she felt back then. Charles's expression shifted, the flicker of hope igniting to a flame. You're right. This feels like fate, Emily. Maybe this is the universe telling me it's not too late. He smiled, the burden of his past beginning to lift, replaced by an ember of possibility. Let's include it, Emily urged, excitement bubbling within her. Let's make this letter not just about regret, but about the connections we forged, even if they seem distant. With that, they set to work again, weaving in the unexpected connection Emily had with Amelia. 
The letter transformed into a tapestry of emotions, regret, hope, and the promise of reconciliation. As they signed the letter, a sense of accomplishment enveloped them. They had taken a monumental step, one that could change the course of Charles's life. Emily felt a profound connection to Charles, one that transcended the boundaries of nurse and patient. It was a bond forged through shared vulnerability and the desire for love and acceptance. Thank you, Emily, Charles said softly, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. You've given me a chance I thought I'd lost forever. With her heart swelling with pride, Emily smiled back at him. You deserve this, Charles. No matter what happens next, you've taken the first step toward healing. Emily stood at the threshold of the hospital room, her heart pounding in her chest. After weeks of role-playing as Amelia, she felt the weight of the deception more than ever. The laughter they had shared, the stories exchanged, and the tears shed. All of it had made her feel more alive than she had in years. But now, the truth loomed over her like a dark cloud, and she knew it was time to confront the reality of her actions. Charles, she began, her voice trembling slightly as she stepped into the room. He looked up, his expression a mix of curiosity and concern. I need to tell you something important. Charles, sitting up in his bed, adjusted his glasses. What is it, Emily? You're scaring me. She took a deep breath, summoning every ounce of courage within her. I'm not Amelia. I'm Emily, your nurse. I've been pretending to be your daughter for this past day. For a moment, silence enveloped the room. Charles's face drained of color, his brow furrowed in disbelief. What? You mean this whole time? I'm so sorry, she rushed in, her heart aching at the sight of his shock. I didn't intend to deceive you. I just wanted to help you feel connected again, to give you one last chance to experience what it might be like to have her back in your life. Charles's expression shifted, a mixture of hurt and betrayal flickering in his eyes. You've been living a lie. How can I trust you now? Emily stepped closer, desperation filling her voice. Please understand. I know what it's like to yearn for family. I thought that if I could just be there for you, we could mend something broken together. He looked away, his hands trembling slightly as he processed the betrayal. You've taken advantage of my vulnerability, Emily, he said, his tone sharp. I let you in. I shared my most intimate memories, thinking you were my daughter. I know, and I'm so sorry, she whispered, tears welling in her eyes. But I've also shared my struggles with you. I've felt the weight of loss and longing. I was trying to bridge the gap between us, and I foolishly thought you might find some solace in my presence. As the silence stretched painfully between them, he finally met her gaze. There was a flicker of understanding in his eyes, a softness that hadn't been there moments before. You felt lost too, didn't you? He said quietly, his voice barely above a whisper. Emily nodded, her heart aching. I've been trying to connect with my own father, and it hasn't been easy. I thought maybe, just maybe, I could help you find that connection with Amelia. The air in the room shifted, the tension easing ever so slightly as Charles took a deep breath. You cared enough to step into her shoes, even if it was misguided, he said, his voice thick with emotion. That's something I never expected from you. Before they could delve deeper into the nuances of their shared pain, the door swung open abruptly. A nurse, her face flushed with excitement, burst into the room. Mr. Harrington, Amelia is here. She received your letter. Charles's heart raced, a mix of anticipation and anxiety flooding through him. He glanced at Emily, who stood frozen, her eyes wide. Amelia, he repeated, as if trying to convince himself the moment was real. Yes, she's on her way, the nurse beamed, and then, as if sensing the gravity of the situation, she added, I'll give you a moment. The nurse stepped out, closing the door behind her. Charles turned to Emily, his expression shifting from disbelief to a frantic hope. What if she hates me? What if she can't forgive me for everything that's happened? Charles, you have to be honest with her, Emily urged, her voice steady despite her own turmoil. You need to tell her how you feel. If she's come here, it means there's hope. He nodded, running a hand through his hair, anxiety coursing through him. I never thought this day would come. I don't know if I'm ready. None of us ever are, Emily replied softly. But you deserve this chance. You've waited too long. Just then, the door opened once more, and Amelia stepped inside. She paused, her eyes darting between her father and the nurse. 
Charles's breath hitched in his throat as he took in the sight of her. She looked just like he remembered, strong-willed, beautiful, and radiating an energy that both thrilled and terrified him. Dad, Amelia spoke, her voice trembling. I came as soon as I got your letter. Amelia, Charles breathed, his heart racing. I, but before he could finish, his eyes widened, taking in her appearance. There was an unmistakable roundness to her midsection, and it struck him like a bolt of lightning. You're pregnant. Amelia placed a hand on her belly, a nervous smile breaking through her initial apprehension. Yes, I am, she admitted. I wasn't sure if I should tell you right away, but I wanted you to know. I've been thinking about you a lot, especially after hearing about your health. Charles felt a wave of emotions crash over him. Joy, fear, and an overwhelming sense of responsibility. I can't believe it. I thought I'd lost you forever, he murmured, his voice thick with emotion. I've been thinking about reaching out, Amelia confessed, her eyes shimmering with unshed tears. I heard stories about you, about what you were going through. It made me realize I couldn't keep holding on to the past. As they exchanged a charged glance, Emily watched, her heart swelling with hope for what was unfolding. This was it, the moment they had both longed for. But as the realization hit her that her role was now complete, a pang of sadness crept in. She had forged a bond with Charles, one that was genuine despite the deception, and now she felt like an intruder in this moment. Emily, Amelia said, breaking into her thoughts, thank you for being here. I know my dad was grateful for your support. Charles turned to Emily, and for a brief moment, the weight of the past lifted. You were a light in my darkest days, he said, his voice filled with sincerity. I don't know how I would have gotten here without you. Tears streamed down Emily's face as she nodded. You both deserve this chance to heal. Family isn't just defined by blood. It's about the connections we make along the way. Amelia stepped closer to her father, and as they embraced, Charles whispered, I'm so sorry for everything, Amelia. I wish I could take back the years we lost. Let's not dwell on the past, she replied, pulling back to look into his eyes. Let's focus on building our future together for the baby. As the three of them stood in the room, united by fragile threads of forgiveness and hope, Charles felt a warmth spread through him. He had been given a second chance, not just as a father, but as a man ready to embrace the complexities of family. Emily felt a bittersweet smile grace her lips, knowing that she had played a part in this reunion, a moment that would forever intertwine their stories. In that hospital room, amidst the sterile walls and muted colors, a new narrative was being written one of love, connection, and the understanding that family could be defined in countless ways. And as they stood together, they realized that sometimes the most important ties are those we create for ourselves, stitched together by shared experiences, compassion, and the unwavering hope of new beginnings.